That is a pig right there. That is a giant oh, pig. Man. Oh. I told you we should have brought our hunting bows. Oh, God. Focus. Okay, anyway. If you have not practiced enough with it, understanding how your muscles work and the shot cycle, and you don't have a solid mental program, you're going to get trashed at some point. You're, you're going to start hammering releases when that sight picture becomes perfectly still because in your mind you think that's just the way it should be. I'm activated by one finger instead of having to keep consistency on all three fingers or just even two or four. You know, there's a four-finger model out there. Yep. And I, yeah, there, yeah I think there was a five, but uh, no, it can't be. Anyway. You only have four we, fingers. Yeah, we can edit that out, right? <laughs> anyway. No, um, I'm not. So, yeah. <laughs> when he takes that lens out, there's still the same amount of movement, but he's not seeing it as much, which puts probably more comfort in your mind, I would yeah. assume. The higher power you go in your lens, the more movement you will see. Like for Adam, when he takes out a lens and he says he shoots his best, like he's still moving the same whether the lens is in there or not in there. Yeah. Hey everyone, this is Rod White, and you're either listening to or watching The Rod White Bow Show. Go. Welcome to The Rod White Bow Show. I am in the truck. What is this thing, a truck or a SUV or a I think car? It's an SUV. It's like a yeah. hybrid. On the way to the Paris ASA tournament, just met my good buddy Adam Gibson. I mentioned him in an earlier podcast. What up? Adam is arguably one of the best wrist strap shooters in the industry, I think, as far as professional shooting goes in 3D archery and target archery. I would put him right up there with Louis Holmes and Paige. Page yeah. Gore. Yeah. They're <laughs> both pretty good. So is Michael Braid. Braden's did a lot. That's true. I totally didn't even think about him. Yeah, Braden's did a lot. Braden's, yeah, those, those guys there kind of set the, I guess, set the path for uh, me to kind of stay with it. You know, everybody else is kind of changing over to the, the handhelds, you know, the, the buttons or the, you know, the back tensions. They kind of, if they're still doing it, then I could, so. Yeah, and especially in our industry where, good Lord, I mean, <laughs> that's, everybody's shooting back tension or, uh, you pull out a wrist strap now, well, and not now, I mean, it's sort of falling back, backwards where everybody's kind of like, well, you know, okay, but shoot, five years ago, they're like, uh, yeah, that's what you use for hunting, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, so, you know, Gillingham's won a lot. All those guys won, you know, Braden and Paige and Louie's done real well here. You know. And Louie's pretty new, actually. What, he's only been shooting, like, is it right, like three or four years, did he say? Four years, three it's or four years. Amazing. I think it's four years, but, yeah, he's done really good. So, well, yeah. And Danny Evans, too. Does he so, shoot a trigger? Yeah. Yep, and he does. Danny's done real well. So, I can see that. Yeah. We're working on some stuff with Danny. Well, today's show is, or this episode, is all about wrist straps. Uh, mainly, which sounds really odd. I'm sure those of you who are out there hunting um, know that probably I would venture to say, I should say, that more than 90% of you are shooting wrist straps. And the way in which a release is activated, if, if done improperly, can lead to massive problems to the point where some people actually quit archery because of target panic and buck fever. And... A lot of people seem to make the switch into handheld releases because they want to um, avoid that. Yeah. And I think the fact of the matter is you need to have the right mental game to begin with. Even people who are shooting back tension releases, a lot of people are hammering them, a.k.a. Tim the Hammer, yeah. Gillingham. Yeah. And uh, I just thought this would be kind of a cool podcast to talk to, or an opportunity at least, to talk to somebody who's, you know, man, I, I don't, I don't, I've never seen you shoot anything but a wrist strap. Um, yeah, that's all I, that's all I've shot. I mean, I've done a few here and there, um, where, um, you know, I've just decided to pick some up back tension. Now I do store a back tension with me. Um, just, uh, you know, you feel naked without it. Yeah. <laughs> Cause everybody else has one in their pocket. Yeah, I, I do. <laughs> I keep one in there just to keep, to let my bow do follow through. Like for me, um, follow through is a big thing. Like I'll, I'll do the stupid thing every once in a while where 
I, I'll fire the release, and my mind um, says, okay, it's fired, but I kind of want to just, you know, move the bow out of my way to see where that arrow went. Um, but that's not the way to do it. you got to let the bow do what it wants to do and then just focus on the target. So, um, yeah, it's, it's a big thing. I think the biggest thing that kills guys um, is – they, they will start to punch, and they automatically just go back to back to, oh, I need a back tension. Well, it's you got it. You, you probably got the really set too light. Now, mine are pretty light, but I've been able to take my middle game up to where I've set it heavy and then worked myself up to where when I command shot, um, I, don't, I don't do a, you know, a back tension style. I command shoot it, um, but... You got to get it on there where you can just trust that finger just to squeeze. Um, guys, like you said before, that you can you can still punch back tension all day long um, and not have a not have a problem with it. Um, and it, sorry, we had some technical difficulties there oh, for a second. There's a, a van beside us without any windows and says it's free candy FB on the side. It's FBI van. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we get some interference. But, yeah, on the back tension, um, you know, guys can punch that. Guys can bail out on that. Um, thumb buttons, I call them bail buttons. They're just as much, you know, you can bail out of those just as you can as a wrist rocket or what guys call a caliper. Um, you know, or what I, you know, my index finger release. So you can bail on those too. Um, they're in, and you see the guys like, I, I'm pretty sure Louie, um, I can't speak for him. I know Danny, um, probably Paige and... Uh, Tim and I are about the only guys that kind of command shoot um, with them. Braden, I know he's got his so, so stiff that you could step on it and it probably won't go off. Um, he wraps his up pretty deep, but um, it. And let me step back on that. It's the separation of the mind. So here's an example I give. I, I give all the time. So let, let's say right now we're driving along here and a dog runs out in front of me. Um, it's a natural reaction to just step on the brake, okay? And so when I'm firing this release in an index fire, re an index release, um, I get in there and I just wrap, you know, get my finger on the trigger. And when my sight picture gets, you know, the way my brain says, okay, it's good, it fires. I don't have to tell my foot to step on the brake. It naturally happens. I don't tell my index finger to go. Guys think I wind up when I say, yeah, I command you. Oh, you punch. Well, no punching. It's just actually just thinking about it. It, My mind commands it to go now. Um, the problem a lot of people run into is trying to separate those two halves of your brain to go, okay, fire and or not to fire. You know, or you see guys kind of flinch and then creep up on it. Hey, I've been guilty of it. Especially when stuff gets tense um, and a shoot off or um, whatever else, whatever it might be, I'll start to kind of, you know, maybe flinch a little bit because I'm not letting my mind relax enough and I'm not comfortable with that, you know, that shot or what my sight picture looks like. And uh, guys can even do it with the back tension. You know, I I command a shot, but guys with the back tension, they can still command a shot. They just do it at a slower rate. And if I'm going to do it, I'd rather do it at a faster rate than a slower rate with the back tension, you know. Well, so, so before, we, hopefully we didn't lose too many people right there because you probably just said, so many words in a different language that people don't understand at all. Oh, yeah. <laughs> because yeah, yeah. we've got a wide array of people probably listening to this, some who have may just be starting to shoot. Yeah. Um, so there, there basically are, and which I should have let in this my fault, but there are basically, in my mind, really, there's three types of releases. There's a hinge-type release, uh, quote-unquote, back tension. There's yeah. a thumb-trigger release, which some people classify as back tension in a weird way. And, well, actually, there's four now. Mm -hmm. Um Yep. You have releases like the Stan Element, um, Dudley's Knock 2. It's not as Knock 2. It is Silverback, I think. Silverback, yeah. And uh, there's another There's one. a Lausch release that used to... Lausch Hamsky, actually, I think, took that over. It's a Lausch True Tension release. Um, and th I think that's it. They're basically releases that work off tension. So right. And Evolution. Carter Evolution. That's what it was. Yeah, Evolution. And what we're talking about today uh, in a wrist stat strap style release um is also known as a bunch of different things caliper release like you mentioned before um index. wrist rocket yeah index i mean yeah you're just using your index finger to get the trigger to go off it's just like squeezing a rifle trigger what it is so 
because you brought up rifle, mm-hmm. um, what happens with people when they experience buck fever? And um, as soon as I get all this up on the website, I'm working on a lot of this content. And as soon as I get it up there, obviously I'll let you guys all know. But in short, kind of what happens with target panic for people is most people learn how to shoot a gun before they learn how to shoot a bow, men or women. You, I mean, just naturally growing up, it seems like um, probably every kid gets a BB gun for the most part. Those who don't probably don't quite go through the same scenario of target panic as what other people do because the way their mind functions around aiming is mostly different. So when you, since we're driving a car, when you learn how to drive a car, basically, as we're coming up to a curve right now, you learn, don't wreck over this. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> you you learn as you just start driving a car, as you turn that wheel, and maybe even when you get in a different car or truck, as you turn that wheel, you see a reaction with the car. And as you learn how to turn it more on a on a sharper curve and less on a less sharp curve, it y- you eventually get to a point where it becomes what we consider subconscious. Yeah. And that subconscious, um, at that point, when you, when you hit the level when you're driving for years, don't. I should be careful about how I wear this, but <laughs> I don't want any kids out there, parents calling me <laughs> saying, I, my kids just took driver's ed and yeah. you told them to drive with their knee. But yeah. in yeah. theory, we'll just say, wink, wink, you could drive with your knee on the steering wheel, texting in one hand and eating a cheeseburger. Not that I've done that. Well, done you, that. yeah. Uh, okay. Well, I was actually getting pretty good at that. Actually. <laughs> <laughs> I, all right. yeah. Now I got to put a caution sticker yeah, on this Vanessa, one. Yeah, Vanessa, uh, she actually yells at me quite a bit about that. <laughs> but yeah, it's it, well. So what it is is that's example I use a lot is driving. So you're not on aiming. Now for me, it's not okay. Let's keep two foot off the center line, three feet off the you know the edge there. Um, it just you're looking ahead of you and not looking at the front of the. Um, vehicle there right you're looking ahead of you and your hands just naturally put it in the center every time even if you don't you're not trying to line it up and that's what a, you know with index finger and that's a whole different I, I guess show for you but um even with aiming i catch guys a lot of times they'll they'll want to try to find aim and you don't find aim a car you mean you're looking in the center and it's putting it in the center right but what happens with an index finger release is we start to try to find aim and then we get it really fine aim and bam we want to punch it well no um what you want to do is just get comfortable your mind gets comfortable and then it goes not okay i get to think about it there it is now boom fire no your mind actually just says i feel comfortable making the trigger go off well and and back to the rifle thing mentally what's occurring is because you learn that wherever the crosshairs or the iron sights are on your bb gun or whatever it is you've learned to shoot with or your 22 that that is where your bullet's going to go when the sear fires or whatever you call it, the triggering mechanism Trigger inside. Triggering, when it yeah. when it fires, it's it's it is out of your control. That bullet's leaving, depending on obviously your gun. A BB's considerably slower, but uh, it's leaving at uh, roughly uh, you know around two to three thousand feet per second. Your arrow is leaving at two hundred and eighty feet per second, more than likely, right in that range. I mean, it, obviously that fluctuates depending on your setup, but you're not even going at half the speed of sound whenever you shoot an arrow. So, or the arrow's not leaving the bow at even half the speed of sound. I think it's like speed of sound is like 880 yeah. feet per second or something like that yeah. if you did the math. I don't know. Um, but my point is is that y- y- there is something that we refer to, or I refer to at least, as lock time. And that is the amount of time from which the release is activated till the arrow is out of your control. Mm-hmm. With a gun, obviously it's gone. So... The association is already made immediately because most people get a sight on their bow right away when they start. And when you get that sight instantly, your mind wants to go to, I got to put it in the middle of the target. And more often than not, people are taught by someone saying, okay, now put your sight in the middle of the target. Once it's there, you're going to just squeeze the trigger and wham, the first punch occurs. And that is where the, the root begins to grow for target panic. Yeah. And again, whole nother seminar, but to understand how triggers are activated by different people in different styles. I, I for example, for me, I, I, I do everything. I mean, I, man, I wish the ESPN Great Outdoor Games were still here. Uh, Buckmasters, I, I'd love to get back to again. My kids' uh, schedule in the summer makes it tough. 
uh, moving targets. I shoot everything. And then I shoot indoor spots and I shoot 3Ds. And I would say I'm probably not a master really of any of them in particular. I feel like I do pretty decent. But, um, you know, usually uh, I would say in the top 10% at most, most any tournament series that I do or top 15, 20% maybe on a, as my return comes back to 3Ds, it's getting better and better. And the way I activate my releases are all the same. So it doesn't matter whether you give me a trigger or you give me a, a back tension or you give me a, um, uh, boy, a, a Carter, Car a thumb, it doesn't like matter. Index, uh, you know, right. Whatever, um, right. And the way I pull through my shots are basically, I have a very systematic approach to how I execute my arrow um, or my shot. And when I get to that point of where I'm aiming, it's more of a relaxation and a very strong movement in my shoulder, my right shoulder back towards my spine, which you can actually watch me shoot it in practice or in competition. You'll see my elbow actually move. And that freaks a lot of people out. But the concept I learned under how to shoot a bow, I got lucky and, and had a coach, uh, Tim Strickland from Colorado, implanted this early in me. The motion that's happening as you're aiming is actually a good thing. If it's not, if your sight isn't moving, then you're not doing anything either. So what's going to activate the trigger? Well, when it comes to shooting a trigger, if you're shooting a trigger or you're shooting a back tension, whatever that movement is, if if you are not, if you have not practiced enough with it, understanding how your muscles work and the shot cycle, and you don't have a solid mental program, you're going to get trashed at some point. You're, you're going to start hammering releases when that sight picture becomes perfectly still because in your mind you think that's just the way it should be. So motion is actually, for me, it's a very good thing. Now, I don't, I don't want my dot bouncing all over the place, but floating maybe in the X-ring yeah. at 20 yards, for example, that's, that motion for me is good. It means I'm moving. It's a comfort zone thing for me, and it relates to my shot timing. Um, which is not deliberate at all, but my best shots always occur right in that 2.6-ish to 2.8 time second frame from the time I hit full draw. See, I'm totally opposite. Yep. Movement's bad. That's why I've never picked up back tension. It's just due to the fact that when I was moving, my mind would stall. And, and here, here's how I did it. I was doing it the other day, too. Um, I picked up a little boy's... Um, hey, double rainbow. Yeah. Squirrel. But uh, The... Uh, the, I picked up my little boy's toy gun, and I was just aiming at something, and I was squeezing the trigger. And as it squeezed the trigger, I noticed myself I would stall as I came off of the target. I would stop. So I told myself, and this is something good people could pick up to do, um, and I've done it before, is if you're aiming at something, um, which is a toy gun. You know, I, I think this was like a stuffed animal or something uh, our little girl had down there or something. I, I don't know. But as I start squeezing, as I start leaving the target, I stopped squeezing because I left. Um, and that's why I could never get back to you because a pin would sit there and it would sit there and sit there and sit there and sit there. And I would still, and as I started to move to engage, it moved. And so it just it flipped me out. I didn't like it. Now, am I, my, am I micro aiming? No. I mean, I'm getting close. But I would pull enough that it actually start to move completely off target. I'm like, oh, no, I can't do that. Um, but the, I, the way I shoot is what people would call improper, <laughs> I guess. But Well, and that's why we're doing this with you uh, because um, we've talked about this before. You brought up the word command shooting, and people yeah. are going, what the? F what is command shooting? Because yeah. a lot of people are going to say immediately, whatever, that's a controlled punch. That's what he's talking about. It, and it, it essentially it is. I mean, but with me, okay, so I guess I, could, I need to start from the ground up. Um, one is, um, you know, for me, a sight picture is the biggest thing. So I have to set up with the draw length, draw weight, um, stabilization um, is the big key um, there. Uh, if the bow's moving, it's it's just not gonna it, it, it's it's not gonna go off for me. I mean, I'll stall, 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 stall. My brain just says, "Nah, this is not right," you know. Um, so it just it won't activate the finger. Now, once you get the bow set up. Um, once you get the draw link set up, and once you get the stabilizer set up, um, it's perfect. And, and, and Gillingham's a good example of that everybody's like, well, wow, he's got some really long rear bars. Well, it's because it makes his, I think he's using like a five power. I don't quote me on this, five power and 
like a number one clarifier. Or, you know, I, it changes week to week with him and me, I think. But um, with all of us, actually. And but, from Bo to Bo, for sure. Yeah, exactly. But for, you know, him, it's like I have to, I want to see the target. I want to blow it up as big as I can because that's a calming effect in his mind to activate a command style. And I think it's with everybody. Um, even if you shoot back tension, you know, if you start to stall on it, it's because you want your sight picture a little bit better. Um, with me, it's like, okay, once my sight picture is good, once I get that set up, then I go into my brain goes, okay, it's good. I fire the release. And I don't think about it. I don't think now, boom, it's just, it's good. So do you have, you have pressure as, do you apply pressure at I, all? I have a little bit down? of pressure because I found out that if you, and if you go to smack it, what happens is if you go to punch that trigger or whatever you want to call it, I see some guys do some wind up shots. <laughs> um, Hence the name, Tim the Hammer. Yeah, down. exactly. If you start to wind up, the more you move that index finger, the more you move off your anchor point while you're at full draw before the shot's even fired. That's where that hang time or that lock time you're talking about. So if I move that release a little bit, a little bit of bobble back here, it causes a giant bobble at the end. Yep. So I'm aiming, I'm aiming, I'm aiming, you know, and if I have to, you know, wind up to fire, no. And that's the same thing with, uh, and, and, and they relate. It's the same thing with guys shooting um, back tension or thumb button or whatever else. They'll start aiming, and then they'll start to pull their thumb off the, you know, say the knob there just you know to get the safety to go off well that causes a sight picture to move and i just i don't like that um for me if i start to aim sight picture starts moving you know um, that's not good so if i start to move my finger around to get it on the trigger while i'm at full draw or if i have to start to create pressure guess what it starts moving uh, my pin does just like it does with taking my thumb off the barrel or whatever else to get it to you know, get the release, start activating on the back tension or thumb button or whatever else. So, um, hopefully, I don't confuse too many people. Well, I mean, I, you I, might need a pen and paper because I've got ADD so bad right now. <laughs> and me driving and doing podcasts on the road is like, oh. Yeah, oh, the oh. two of us combined are a problem. <laughs> <laughs> oh. you, people need to take meds after listening to us. So. <laughs> but, yeah. So, that's that's how it is. It's, it's, the, it's confidence and sight picture. So, that's how Tim does it. Me, um, personally. Um, I change my setup. My change my setup varies. So indoors, I'll use a four power with no clarifier. And guys are like, well, why do you use no clarifier? Wouldn't you want to see the target? But yeah, but then that's where I start to get into that fine aiming again. And if I fine aim, I stall. My finger does not move. I'm telling you. And then, like everybody else in this game, they want to be accurate. I mean, they want to put that arrow right in the same hole every time. I don't care who you are. You want to try to run it through the same hole. Nobody's ever came to a tournament and said, well, I just want to shoot, you know, 60 X's, but I don't want to put them all in the same hole. I don't care who you are. I don't care. So well, with me. the ultimate goal, obviously. It, <laughs> yeah, exactly. So it's everybody's goal. So you start to fine aim. So me, with fine aiming, that stalls the process. And I only have two, three, four seconds to aim before my muscles start telling me, ugh, get rid of it. <laughs> you know, so. Right. And that's not good. Um, and that's where guys are like, I'm aiming, 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 and then they just punch it. So you've got to create that, make that time short by getting a good sight picture um, and finding out what you like. I can't sit there and tell, you know, you that you need a four power when you feel like you need a six. Um, you know, we were just talking, coming, I think it was last night we were talking, you shoot like a six or a four outdoors? It's. I think it's a six. Six. Yep. But see, with me, I shoot better with no lens. No clarifier on 3D targets. And the reason why is because if I can't really see the ring or want to try to hunt for it, by the time I hunt for it, finding a lens, you know, because um, I know the power's there or whatever's in there, um, by the time I hunt for it and find it, then I'm too long. Um, so that's where I just take the lens out. I know it's there. I know it's behind my pen, and it fires. It's a lot more calm if i'm trying to chase a pin at 50 yards and everybody's like well work on your stabilizer setup well i don't care who you are but it's like hot like metropolis or whatever else um you know london could get kind of warm and some other shoots are out there you're just fatigued you're tired yep um you know especially if you've done some other stuff or if you've helped sponsors or whatever you know and, and you're just you're just tired i mean 
they shoot for draining, especially like a field shoot. Oh, good lord! Um, guys are like, oh, what what power do you shoot there? Especially eighty yards. I shoot with no lens. I'm like, how are you doing that? Well, it's because the pin is behind the white. It causes less movement for me, and I'm comfortable with aiming, and it allows my mind to execute the release. It allows it to say go, and it's something again. It's something I don't think about. It just does it. If you have to think about, okay, there it is now. Then you're doing it wrong. Um, that's where you need to heavy up that trigger, where you could just start squeezing it, and eventually your mind will take over to where it's going. Okay, there it is. Start squeezing, um, and that's and then eventually you can start to lighten that up. And you'll also find too, um, and, and I mean, we went over stabilizers, we went over draw length, draw weight, um, and draw weight, and not to confuse everybody too, as I really don't care about draw weight as much as I care about holding weight for me. Right. Um, so, like, uh, I told uh, my wife, she said, I told her, I said, hey, um, uh, I think it was Vegas. I had a bow that was just shooting really well, uh, the Hyper Edge, the Hoyt Hyper Edge. Um, and I'm still having number one cams, and I found the draw length was right, and so on and so forth. And I was shooting only 60 pounds, but I was holding 15.70. Well, then I switched to 70-pound limbs, um, 2.1 cams, I just felt like I wanted to do that upgrade. Um, so I went to Indoor Nationals. Bow was phenomenal. Um, shot great. It held good. And I told her, I said, dummy me, I didn't check the holding weight. But I guarantee this holding weight, since I'm firing the bow so well, is almost, I mean, it's close to the same. I went home, checked it, checked it three times, and it was 15.67, 15.69. That's close enough 15.72 yeah. for me. So I was like, well, okay. So that will make a, a lot more comfortable sight picture, too, is the holding weight. If you get too light, it might start to get bouncy. Or if you get too light, um, some of these other boat companies now are like, you know, 85, 90, 95% let off. Um, that's all good. And you can aim those well. But the problem is, um, and that comes out to a whole another thing if you start to um, you know execute that release and there's not enough pressure behind the jaws that release to get it to open um, you're gonna have a bad shot especially if you goof up back here a little bit so um, sorry if I'm mixing everybody up and it probably does sound confusing to a lot of people but there are some things I think we mentioned for sure that if you don't know what a uh, if you have never used a lens before the higher power you go in your lens the more movement you will see like for Adam, when he takes out a lens and he says he shoots his best, like he's still moving the same whether the lens is in there or not in there. Yeah. And a clarifier is a small, it, it, it's a small glass lens, which actually we're going to do a podcast with Mike Anderson here this weekend. But And I don't, I don't, like, I know enough to be dangerous with a clarifying lens kind of thing. Like I know the color I need is green. That's what I know. <laughs> and so, you know, he, he shoots a ham ski. His comes in like A, B, C, and D. Yeah. So, yep. anyhow, um, when you add the clarifier, it clarifies the picture quite a bit. There's even one, for those of you who are getting older and you're bow hunting with sight pins, there's one called a verifier, which will help clear up your sight pins. So when he takes that lens out, there's still the same amount of movement, but he's not seeing it as much, which puts probably more comfort in your mind, I would yeah, assume. Yeah, that's uh, like driving a car that's super wobbly. It's still staying in the middle, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and it kind of scares you a little bit. But then you got a smooth driving car. It kind of gives you confidence, you know. It's like, uh, yeah, it, you just see too much movement. You know, stuff's bouncing. And that's where I was saying the other day, I was like, I was kind of stalling on that shot there. Um, you know, where I put the that little cap gun or that gun my little boy had there. I was aiming at the doll. And as if I see movement, I start drifting off of it. I stop and stall. And so I just kept doing it all night until I, you know, I was on there. And um, I, the movement started getting slower. I just started aiming as I started squeezing. You know, if it still drifted off, I still continued because my mind still put it in the center. You know, my mind actually still drifted back. For some reason, as it's coming towards the center there, it still put it in the middle, back right when the well, trigger was about e to break. E I say this a lot in seminars, too. Like, your mind can't let you not aim. Yeah. If I said, don't think about yeah. pink elephants, everybody listening to this podcast, pro I mean, with rare exception, had an image of a pink elephant just popping in your head. Yeah. Don't think about purple squirrels. <laughs> Man, everybody's thinking about purple squirrel. Yeah. You, you, you've been, since the time you were a kid, so I don't know if you want to say God's put this in you, if you believe in God, if, if and, and I do, and Adam does. I do. Oh, yeah. um, 
or let's just take the creation route or whatever that, you know, there's something put in you from evolution that just aiming is a natural thing you do. Mm -hmm. Like even throwing a rock, you're looking to where you want to go. When you walk, you look to where you want to go. Mm -hmm. And um, you don't aim the ball or aim the rock when you're right. throwing it. You look at what you want to hit. Yep. And that's important. If the glove is continually moving, you stall on throwing it. Right. You just, or, you know, um, it, you, you just stop. The process stops on actually, you know, trying to get that shot to go. So you're just like, okay, well, I'm not going to throw it until the guy stops. So that's the same thing with the lens. If it's moving, well, guess what? I stop. But I found that indoors with a four power, it brought it up close enough. It enlarged the um, target big enough. Uh, like especially if we're shooting, you know, Vegas where we're shooting, or let's say not Vegas, um, Iowa or Midwest or Kansas City or uh, Lancaster. Where These are all twenty yard indoor it, five yeah, spot 20 targets. Yard, twenty yard about. indoor five sp or Vegas three spot, where the super X or the small baby X the size of what like a dime. Yeah, roughly. Yeah, roughly. A little maybe a little bit bigger, but. Um, let's say a dime, so it makes it seem more cool. Yeah. But when I aim at that, it blows it up big enough that I can actually see it. Um, when I take the lens out, it's so small that I can, I can't really, you know, I'm trying to peek behind the pin to make sure it's there. Um, now, if I know it's there, I try to aim for it. But if like on a foam, like 3D this weekend, ASA when we're going down there, if it's not there, I don't really try to peek behind it. I just kind of set my mind there, and it just naturally aims in the center there. Right. You know, there's not a bullseye here in the middle of the road. You're just looking at it, and it naturally drifts in the center. Yep. So that's the way I look at it. But Well, um, and I think that's where you're, you um, you enter into the, the subconscious part of the equation for you yeah. when you're triggering your release. Like, that's yeah. – you're, you're not consciously making an effort to do that. Now, when you pull back into your shot – are you, um, and I've watched you shoot before, but is are you squeezing your shoulder blades back together? Or how are you, like, once you get the full draw, how do you maintain your sight picture? Because obviously you're talking a lot about steadying up that sight. So there's not nearly, you're not nearly the, a kind of dynamic shooter, I guess I would no, say that I just I create enough tension in there, and I stop. Um, and I can't tell you exactly what, you know, I just go to full draw, and I st stop. And it stops, you know, my and my shoulder blades stop. I don't move my shoulder blades anymore. Right. I keep engaged just to hold enough to hold the bow back. Gotcha. So that's what I do. Um, if I start engaging my shoulders a lot, well, guess what? I start moving. So it's kind of like, well, okay. But I can tell you this. Um, different disciplines of archery for me, um, and it will be for everybody, will take a different kind of um, aiming. Um and I know this is ADD. I'm watching this highway patrol man <laughs> as we're going to go by him right now. Uh, Dude, this is like we definitely look like we're on Top Gun. <laughs> and uh, he's for Goose and Maverick here. He's staring us down so hardcore, <laughs> dude. <laughs> oh, oh, uh, I'm waiting to get pulled over. Um, am I doing a speed limit? Yeah, I am. Sorry. Sorry, guys. If you guys, if this gets, show gets bad ratings, it's because <laughs> of me. I promise you, it's all because of me. <laughs> there is. Uh, I told you whenever this bow show started, uh, folks out there that are listening, that you get nothing but the real oh, deal it's, all the time it's, with me. Yeah, so. it's definitely real. And after, like, <laughs> I think I've been on the road, yeah, all day, 12 hours now. So, yeah, you get you get kind of loopy. But anyway, <laughs> um, so for me, I mean, different. And, and, and long story short, it just becomes you have to find out what works best for you. Some guys like, I've got a buddy who likes a, Tim, he likes a pen that's super bright and super monstrous um, where you can see it. And I, I can't do that. It's so bright that I can't see beyond the pen. Um, and so I'm just continually peeking behind the pen. I have to shoot a 10,000 fiber, either green or blue. Um, red, I'm colorblind, so that don't work out too well. <laughs> so... Um, and then if I'm indoors, I shoot a black dot with a lens. It blows up the target big enough. And once the black dot covers the X, my head says fire. Um, if it's don't, if, if, it, if it doesn't, um, I let down. And that was the hardest thing in the world for me um, is letting down. If the sight picture doesn't look good or if I start to get fatigued or I have a hold too long, and I'll know I'll hold too long. I'm like, eh, it's going to go bad. And trust me, when I tell you guys this, it, it helped me immensely. I've, I've, there's been a couple times where I've fired shots 
and I'm like holding them, bouncing it, went to center. That automatically told my mind, ooh, I could get away with it. <laughs> well, guess what? It doesn't always work out. So the best thing for you to do is to let down. And that's that takes you, especially for a command shooter, I have no idea why, but I've asked people to shoot back tension. Um, it takes more. That is a pig right there. That is a giant oh, pig. Man. Oh. I told you we should have brought our hunting bows. Oh, God. Focus. Okay. Anyway, but it uh, it takes more for a guy to let down um, command shooting than it does for a guy with back tension because he can control that shot more than a guy with a back tension, I think. Does that make sense? Yeah, I think so. I think I think people can understand that. Um, um, I'm when more in control of it because I got my finger there and I can control it. I can get, you know, fired any time. So if the sight picture's going bad, just let down. Restart. Um, we and, and the games we shoot, we have plenty of time. Now, ASA, you can only let down two times. Deer hunting, you can't. But that's a whole different deal. That's where you've shot enough through the summer, um, shot enough, you know, spring um, to begin – you know, comfortable to where, you know, hey, if I come up, my setup time, and what I mean by setup time, and setup time to me is not, you know, putting arrow on the string and pulling back. Mine is pulling back, anchoring. I'm going to pull back, anchor, and get down on the target. That's setup time. I have yep. to set up to where that pin gets down there, and it gets down there quickly. Because the more time I, f I fool with slowly creeping down on the target, the less time I have to actual aim and actually to get my release to fire the correct way. Um, so that's the same thing with deer uh, deer hunting. For me, it's pull back, look the exact spot I want to hit, and my pin falls into there. That goes back to driving again. You don't look at the end of the hood of the vehicle and aim it. You look at the road and it aims itself. I look at the deer, I look at the target, I look at whatever, pull back, and it falls right into the place. Yep. So, yep, and that's the setup time. I make it quick. That's the huge thing for me with command shooting. Um, and it's the setup time. The, the, the next biggest thing is actually picking out a, a, a good release. Um, and I'm, I'm, for me and, I, and Danny Evans and a few of us other guys, um, Lewis Holmes and – Lucky uh, Dogs. Yeah. Uh, we're actually working on a new index – style release right now that will suit everybody um my problem is I always had to release that when i fired i pulled the trigger and no matter what i did it was either hanging up or um and for me hook style releases were always good for hunting but they weren't always good for accuracy so like if i command shot a little bit or let's say if i got my finger out on the trigger a little different and if you guys and how i do this is if you actually look if you take it let's say a, a you know, any wrist strap style release um, index finger. And you actually start to climb out. That's what, what I mean by that is putting a, your index finger a little bit further out on the trigger. It actually changes the position of the head a little bit. It'll actually cause that head of that release to go, you know, grab a little bit more of the D-loop or one way or the other. I actually start to kind of, you know, make a, an angle there. And I don't want that. And that um, is, if, if you want to see, like, a further explanation of that, if you, I, well, I guess I shouldn't say see because we're driving and talking, but um, if, if you were to push on the side of your bowstring, if you were shooting out of a shooting machine, and you push on the side of it just even a sixteenth of an inch, the impact difference at 40 yards, depending on your setup, could be up to a foot. Oh, yeah. It so can, I've seen it worse than that. Facial pressure, the string on oh, your yeah. face, is a major no-no, in my opinion, now, do people do it? Yeah, there are exceptions to every rule, and I there it. are some great shooters <laughs> that bury strings. I do what did it. you just say? You do uh, it? I do it. I do it. Uh, yeah. You need a better coach. <laughs> <laughs> I <do>. uh, <laughs> I'm poor. I can't afford one. <laughs> uh, um, but, yeah. Y you, uh, y y y it, it has a massive effect downrange. That is immeasurable to you as a shooter when you're aiming, um, but – it's the same thing with a release. When you have your finger way out on the edge, which is a big argument why, like, I only shoot two fingers. I don't shoot three yep. fingers on a release. Yep. Yep. Uh, rarely will you ever catch me with three fingers. The, the less amount of fingers or the less amount of parts touching that string when a shot's fired is the better off you're going to be. Yeah, because it equates and to less effect. deviation yep. from the line that is normally yep. there. Yep. So. And that's, 
I mean, good Lord, I could go on and on and on about it. But what it is is basically we got it to where it's a single jaw, which I think single jaws are the best because, you know, you don't have to worry about both jaws open at the same time. A hook release, if I got way out on that trigger, if I came in, it actually would cause the, the hook to actually hook a little bit deeper on the D-loop or a little bit open on the D-loop. And some guys are like, hey, I like it for hunting. Great. Um, but my definition of hunting accurate and there and some other guys definition of hunting accurate is two different things i want to be able to not just hit a dixie cup at 20 i want to be able to put all 12 shafts inside that dixie cup that's yep. just the way i am and so um because in the way i've always said it um in in, in telling people or teaching people um is if i have that's less room for error you're already dealing with in a tree stand and see how I'm going off. It's ADHD. <laughs> um, but, you know, you're in a tree stand, the wind's blowing, the nerves are up, you're in a weird position. Um, if I, you know, say I'm shooting a thicker glove that day and I start to creep out on the end of that trigger and I'm halfway accurate with my, my setup, that equals to a, you know, a much, much bigger expansion of where that pin's going to hit, yep. especially when those things are in effect. So, we tried to take it out with this new release we're building uh, from Trueball, which should drop June 1st. We're in the final stages of it. So, um, uh, you know, guys that like, you know, to be able to squeeze a trigger can do it. It's a crisp release, single jaw. You ain't going to worry about the head deviating. We put plenty of weight behind the release, um, and that's important to me. Um, Explain that real quick. Now, weight behind the release. So, there's two types of weight. Weight is on this release, it's a head. Um, the head's heavier. Um, it's actually, I, I don't want to say what it's going to be made of because we're kind of, you know, teeter tottering back and forth, but it's just, it's going to be heavier. So when it's heavier, um, as I start to put the finger on the release and the shot's fired, if I do have a tendency to mess up a little bit on the shot, say I am in that tree stand or I am in a weird position or my footing's just not right or I'm just tired, okay? Um, it, doesn't allow that head to move left or right as much especially if i start to creep out on the end of that trigger it's not going to allow that head to swivel left or right the heavier weight keeps in the center it's so easy. the impact of a mistake of additional torque on the string like we were talking about earlier is reduced with a heavier release you believe yeah yeah i do um and also too it allows it to have some weight back here behind the hand um or in front of the you know with the hand we're usually just a normal aluminum style release, which they're good. Um, it, when it's fired, it kind of gets everything out of the way. Um, it just comes straight back in line and allows everything to fall in a linear line to me. It kind of pops off and gets out of the way. Um, and keeping things in straight lines is what we do, you know. Yep. Um, and that's why, you know, we kind of wanted to go into the risk release, um, keeping everything in lines. And if there was any issues, if, you know, hey, we're human. God didn't make us perfect on purpose. Um, and I, I'm nowhere near perfect, trust me. But if I did screw up, um, and hey, I'm human too, even though I'm a professional archer, I'm still human. And that, re and I did jack up that release, that shot, it's not gonna affect me as much downrange. That's just, that's all it comes down to it. Um, but this release is, it's crisp. I can get it super light, I can get it super heavy. Um, and it it fires awesome. So I'm excited about it. Um, I've probably got a collection over two. Oh, I'd hate to imagine how many index finger releases I've got <laughs> that I've went through. And when they asked me to be a part of this, um, Mark and Greg and Brandon and Tommy, all those guys over there at True Ball, um, it was ex ex I was ecstatic about it. So, oh yeah. Um, We've seen a few guys have success still early on the stage with it. Uh, Jack Wallace has made a couple um, shoot-offs ASA Ooh, with that's it. That's a guy I forgot earlier. It's on yeah, the list. Jack. Yeah, but Jack switched back and forth, so it's kind of well. Jack is is his coach was my, is my coach was my coach. Oh, so yeah, we're pretty similar in style. He could yeah. grab either one and shoot probably well. execute the same way, but yeah. he would he would not execute it the way that you're yeah. describing it at all. Yeah, Louis did real well too with it. I think uh, Louis made shoot off in Vegas this year. Yeah, he did. Yep, and he did real well with it. Made shoot off at Indoor Nationals. I don't know. If no, he did I don't. Think he did, I left early. Hey, I, I still love you, Louis. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I was kind of grumpy after that day, but um, <laughs> but yeah. So you know, and I've sh 
I've shot decent with it. I mean, I've sh shot well with it so far, what I've had, I mean, and uh, it will put them down range. But um, let's not, not get too far off track. It's And for me, with the index finger, is going back to keeping everything in lines. Um, it For me, it was always difficult to kind of go, okay, well, if I put this handheld or a thumb button or a back tension or a true tension, whatever release you want, i got to have three fingers out there. So I've got to create... So I don't move that head again like I was with the, you know, with what we were talking about. If you start to move that jaw or the head around a little bit, it causes a little bit of deviation. At with a back range. tension style. Yeah, with a back tension, with a thumb button, whatever. Um, how am I going to create equal tension on, you know, my ring finger, my middle finger, my index finger? How, how am I going to keep that consistent? I can't. Right. The only way you can really do it is with two fingers, and I just didn't feel comfortable with that. Um, and also as well with me, on my knuckles, I'm like, I can't really feel an anchor point, you know, too well. I, most people can, but I, I really couldn't. Maybe it's because of my fat face anymore. Well, um, it's <laughs> you know, and then keeping everything in line, you know, that's the thing is with me is, you know, that jaw, if you look at the jaw on an index finger release, is directly in line with your elbow. Yep. And, or, and we all know when you shots fired and that release goes off, and the elbow comes straight back. If that release is going to follow it, your elbow straight. Well, that arrow is going to go where it wants to go. You know, yep. you're going to have less deviation on left and right. So, um, and and that that to me, um, it was simple. You know, it was always there. I didn't have to worry about putting anything in a release pouch or anything. It was just, right. It was always there all the time, and I hunted with it. So was, some guys will go from a a back tension to a thumb button, and to me, I like to be able to practice with everything, um, all 3D season or field archery season, whatever um, that I'm going to use. Um, and so that way, I didn't have to go. Well, now I've got a thumb button, and when you know, I decide to, because our season goes on forever anymore. Right. Tournament season it goes on all the way up to <laughs> what August now. Yeah, and, and that's how like this podcast will roll out. Uh, basically, I, as we're doing things, I'm I'm. I'm gonna call. I don't know if I'm gonna call us from the road or something. Yeah. Bow show from the road, something Bo silly. But the road. Yeah. I'm driving so much. I've got so much time on the road. But it is literally. <sighs> we've gone. Well, we even came. We went and shot fully. Yep. And then we went back and shot nationals. Yep. I mean, it's it's bouncing in and out with these it's, different styles I, and different. Then my wife, she, I mean, bless her heart, she's put up. Or she goes with me to ninety percent of them. Um, you know, and she's like I. I don't think I was home. Um, put it this way. I don't think I was home from the first week in December all the way up, except for Christmas and New Year's, and that was it. I was gone again. Yep. So, and I can't complain. You know, everybody's like, oh, you shouldn't complain. You got a good life. You know, you're shooting archery. Well, yeah, I know. Um, and I'm blessed to do that. We both are. Well, but the point is is that we, we are continually changing our games yeah, for all the, the most time. part. And I mean, it's, it's hard for me to go from shooting a wrist strap all year to shooting a thumb button because I want to clip it on my release and use my rattling horns in the tree stand, um, I can't do that. So I just right. used it all year, and vice versa. I can't use it go all from hunting season, and I don't stop shooting. Even when I'm in the middle of hunting season, I'll shoot my hunting bow just as much as I did my 3D bow, just because I just, you know, if there was something wrong, I would rather catch it, you know, midday while right. I'm in between stand sets or whatever else or throughout the week when I do got time. So, and then... I re roll straight into the indoor season. So it's like it's hard for me to change and um, when that big that big buck comes out in front of me or big bull or whatever else we're hunting, um, it's i don't want to have those mental errors where it's like, Oh man, I hit the trigger. Guess what? It's not, it's a thumb button this time. Right. You know, you wanna be able to it's it's just a natural reaction to do what you do. Well um, you shouldn't have to think about anything. So it's not gonna change too much. The opposite. I literally I aim best on 3D targets with a thumb activated release, mm -hmm. which sounds yeah. really odd, no. but it uh, the the release I shoot for 3Ds is uh, I'm shooting a Carter. I don't even know what that thing's called. It's insatiable or something like that. Insatiable, insatiable. two or insatiable. Yeah, yeah it's, I still shoot it with two fingers, um, but I have my thumb pretty much kind of wrapped around that peg, and I feel very secure. And I am a little more cons well, I'm a lot more concerned about where I'm intending that air for that arrow to go because sometimes I'm aiming off of shadows uh, wind blows and the shadow moves or light comes out and sun you know it's just it, there are so many variables with that variables. there's a yeah. little bit of security there for me with my thumb on the trigger even though I activate it the same way now when I shoot targets I shoot 
with uh, Hinge. And I move through that click, and then I start my shot process. Uh, and there are people who are extremely good at that, like uh, Jesse Broadwater, who takes a completely different kind of yeah. tactic on that. He's literally, he, he, he's got a great, great uh, Facebook video if you find his page uh, and follow it. That somewhere in there, you could probably find it on YouTube or something too, but I know it's on Facebook, where he talks about how he relaxes his hands like he's slipping off monkey bars. Yeah, Rod tried that, and Rod almost killed himself. <laughs> <laughs> he about slid off that. That part. release was on its way because you got to remember, I was an Olympic shooter, which is fingers, uh, no releases allowed in the Olympics. <laughs> yeah. So uh, yeah, it was hard enough for me with that whole click thing with the hinge because we yeah. have clickers on our recurves. You, you draw your bow back, and there's a little piece of metal, and it sits on your arrow. And when your arrow gets back past that little piece of metal, it clicks against the bow, hence the name the clicker, and that's your signal to relax your hand and execute your oh, shot. Okay. Well. Good God, I'd love to see that. It, uh, <laughs> the first time I did it, I actually, uh, I, I think Butch Johnson, um, he was, we were kind of like, we were roommates. We were always together. We were always shooting together and always in the top three together. So at, at tournament circuits. So we, we roomed together a lot. And I remember him grabbing a hold of one of those. And the clicker was, I, I don't even say it was new. Maybe it was new dating myself. But when, when he got the full draw and that clicker clicked, it was like tremors like you can't believe <laughs> yeah. it's uh it, it could be explosive and i've seen a couple people that have let go of that um yeah. who have switched from fingers to a release when you hear that click and what it is it's just a half moon and it, uh device and basically that hinge rolls around that and it falls off a little shelf makes a click sound and then it falls off a whole shelf and it fires yeah so i yeah i definitely can't do with those because if something clicks in my index finger <laughs> something's wrong <laughs> and and when it clicks i found out too that um and i still carry one i still have one with the click as well um i just don't aim with it i just kind of relax that's what i'm doing with it when i shoot i don't aim i just i don't even care if it's as long as it's hitting a bail and i'm not losing arrows right. i just get, it gets myself to relax mode not be all tense um let the bow do what it wants to do um allow the bow to do its natural direction it wants to do or go and when that thing clicks though if i do try to aim it, it's like click and it moves the pin moves and i i don't know i i'm probably you know i well i in in you're you're activating a little bit differently than i do i when i get to full draw i click it right away just yeah. move in and click it and then i start my shot yeah. process so from the time it clicks to the time i fire is that that 2.6 yeah. and 2.8 second it, range it's the thing is in i you could tell i mean maybe total time i i could promise you i maybe have had Six to six months, not six months solid. I mean, total time, solid shooting a a uh, not solid, but I mean, you know, total time shooting a back tension. You know, I just pick yep. it up to just relax me. That's what I do, um, and so I'm not good. You know, me if that clicks there, and if I'm aiming, I get on the bail, and I know, you know, I could tell my wife, get down there. It's less movement you got to do, you know, with her. Get down there as soon as you get to your anchor, it should click. Yep. Because you're not pulling and then get to the click, you know. And um, so, look at this. This is supposed to be an index finger thing. And now we're talking about back tension stuff. <laughs> well, I was but, coming know. back around to that. Oh, okay. And so, when it gets to, to uh, elk and whitetail season for me, I, I switch back to it. I shoot an index finger. Right. So, I actually went with the intention of shooting an index finger at Nationals this year. Um, but when I swapped, because I shot the, well, the, not the last ASA, the ASA before that. It was the last day's day. Now, it's one I got the check from. I think I shot an index finger on. I have to go back and look. But anyways, I, I made a switch, so I was not shooting my 3D bow, even though they're both Halen X's that I was shooting. I, I made a switch from the, the 3D bow to my indoor bow, and my draw length just wasn't wasn't right. Like, it just didn't – I couldn't get it to settle down, and I looked like I was playing a game of Asteroids up there, man. My, my <laughs> pin would go around that X. I'm like – I, I, taught, <laughs> the I tell everybody it's a slow kid with an etch a sketch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's bad shaking that baby up. But, but yeah, uh, it, and and I have personally, I've never had target panic, and I I hundred percent attribute that to the way that I execute my shots, regardless of the release. So I switch around with them. I know, like for you, it's a it's a comfort thing. Like you just yeah. want to shoot that well, kind of trigger. And, and the thing is, too, you know, like like I've said before, you're when you compete for money, or even if you're doing it in the backyard. You don't want to waste your time just shooting arrows. Um, right. Just shooting arrows. I want to do it comfortably, and that's the thing. It's comfortable in mind. If it's comfortable in your mind, your mind will relax enough that 
you know, you'll shoot. I mean, again, I'll go back to since we're driving, if I've got a wobbly car or if I know that my wheel's about to fall off or wheel bearing's going bad or something's making a noise, I'm like, oh, good Lord, what is going on now? I tense up. Yep. And I can't, you know, I can't concentrate on anything but what's going on there, you know. I can't concentrate on just, you know, uh, just drive the car. Well, the same thing with shooting. It's something's going wrong. You know, I, you know, that pin's moving. I can't concentrate on just execute and follow through. It don't happen. It ain't well, going to happen. It's natural. I think it's natural instinct that it's not going to happen. And um, Well, that, that is and that, that is the essence of, of what happens with target panic is uh, the, why, why slapping a trigger, if you want to call it punching the trigger. Um, yeah. It, it, what happens is a complete breakdown of the shot to where you're not using the muscles you were using to aim. You make a switch into using smaller muscle groups in your fingers. Right. And there, there is a, it can be different for everyone. I, I mean, I filmed, uh, you know, coaching people, helping out here and there. It, I've seen all different types of responses when that goes off. And a lot of times it's the, the sight pin wasn't in the middle of the, the target. If they're shooting circles, like you can see even some of the world's top shooters, You'll see it, their arm go shooting way up in the air whenever the release fires, and you know what the heck is that guy doing? It, it, his pin may have been just below the X, and he got too conscious, or she got too conscious into that that desire to make certain that everything is absolutely 100 percent perfect. So you know, again, it takes a different mentality. You know, Adam, clearly you, you've got that. I mean, you shoot a very you're a very calm person compared to me, even though the ADHD is still there. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Trust but, me. Yeah, it's, I uh, need to be busy all the time. Yeah. And it's like that with my shot execution. I, I, need to, I need to see some movement or I feel like I'm not moving. And if I'm not moving, I can't possibly imagine how that release is going to fire. Now, so. and, and what I want to touch on, guys are like, well, um, I've had guys come up to me, Adam. But the thing is, I had... You know, I was punching a trigger real hard. The minute I went to a back tension, all of a sudden I did well. Well, okay. Well, let's give it just the same amount of time yep. as you did with an index finger release. And let's see how that works out for you. Yep. Because what it is is you're just changing something in your mind. And it says, and, 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 and I always said this, if we never had TP, then we wouldn't have 90% of stuff in archery right now. <laughs> because what we do is we create something to go, this is going to fix it. We buy it. It fixes it for a minute. And guess what? It doesn't fix it. Right. <laughs> and, 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 because all it does is it gave us a calming effect that this fixed the problem. Right. And so when guys are like, well, I slapped the trigger on index finger. Well, make it heavier. Um, they actually, I think they got a few releases. Um, I was talking to Jackie Cottle on the new release that uh, we're actually uh, helping create. He's... And he brought up the option of, hey, you know, maybe we could put a spring on one of these as a trigger. So you actually have to squeeze the trigger for the jaws to engage. If you go to slap it, the spring just bends. Oh, yeah, like the old, uh, what were the, boy, one of the first trigger releases, calipers. Uh, uh, oh, man, yeah. I can't think of it. If you guys know, make a comment. Yeah. Send a picture. But uh, um, yeah, help us out. But yeah, I can. I definitely see his point, too, yeah. and, and, uh, w with what he's trying to do and yeah, where, where it just, it, yeah, it just just that's all you got to do is just he heavy that up. You're change change it around a little bit, um, and sometimes too, it's you're slapping the trigger not because of what release you have, it's because the sight picture that you have. Well, remember the great Randy Elmer, dude. The guy is amazing, uh, yeah. idol. But um, he, he had a bag full of releases. Yep. Yep. He was one of the first I seen do that, and all those releases were set different. I think at one time he might have even had like six of them six, in that pocket. Six, seven, eight. I've heard. I've heard eight start out. Uh, right. Randy might know. I mean, Randy should know, but yeah, yeah. And it's just a calming effect for him because he never knew it was going to go off. It just said his calming effect. I think was just aim. Yes, and aim and complete the shot. That's what his was. So, and funny thing about Randy is that he is very calm. Oh yeah, like you you. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, shooting against him in the ESPN Great Outdoor Games, we're shooting at moving targets. Things are very fast-paced, and he just very slow, un I, calm. Slow isn't the right word because he could keep up with everybody loading arrows and shooting them, but it was always calm and fluid, and guy's just a superhuman. He yeah. just is when it comes are. to archery. But but it's in, and so on the index, that's why I choose to shoot index, only because it's a calming effect for me. Um, it's something I'm used to, and it just made sense. That's just, you know, if, okay, let's put it this way. If you go grab your, you know, your release knuckle deep, you know, on a, like a thumb button or a back tension mm -hmm. or a true tension, you grab it real deep, 
and then you grab it right on the end of your fingers, well, guess what? That changes point of impact. Absolutely. That changes your anchor. That changes your point of impact. That changes your peep-up. That changes everything. Right. So, for me, it's attached to my wrist. I don't – unless I break you my wrist or something. You know, there's nothing there. And and a trick I can give everyone at home, and you can try it. Um, I tell people to not white-knuckle their release on the, on the back tension. So, what I say about that is um, – how, how do I want to wear Like, so as you're pulling back, I actually grab around the wrist strap or whatever else. Right. Um, I'll grab around it. And then as the, as I come to my anchor, or as I get right to my anchor, I relax those fingers. My fingers on the trigger, I relax those fingers. So when okay. I relax it, um, it... It allows my finger to actually move, my index finger. Sorry, Rod was taking a picture. Selfie. Yeah. Um, so let, let's let's do this. Um, everyone at home could take and actually just kind of make a fist um, and then put your index finger out. Still with your fingers clenched except for that index finger. Move that index finger. Then relax all your fingers. Not an open hand, but, you know, just slightly semi-open hand. Now try to move that index finger. It's a lot easier to move that index finger. And the less tension I create throughout the hand, the better off my shots are going to be. Tension is not good, yep. you know. Um, so that's where that's where I tell people I go back. I don't white knuckle it. I wrap around it, wrap around the barrel. I will, you know, hold on tight there, get to my anchor, then relax those fingers. It allows that, you know, I put that finger on the trigger and allows that trigger to get it to go off. If I'm white knuckling it and I try to move that, trigger finger i actually start to move my anchor a little bit to get that release to fire gotcha. um, and it makes things a lot heavier seems like a three or four ounce trigger seems like it's six to me and so it's like that eh, that's not good and when i wrap tension around there like that um it messes with my follow-through um, i think it, it creates a lot of tension in the forearm there and so it doesn't allow my body just to be relaxed and let the arm do what it needs to do um to get that release out of the way Gotcha. Thing. So hopefully that makes sense for everybody. Well, and, and follow through is uh, it, people get a little confused on follow through. When it, the term is used as if you're trying to do something specific after the shot fires, and it's not. It's really you should you should the more relaxed you are, the more consistent you're going to be. Yeah. So yeah. what Adam's talking about is when the release fires, his uh, his elbow is coming back like you mentioned before, and and the hand is just kind of just kind of flopping down really, yeah, it just and it comes back. back um, Again, not to bring up Jesse again, but you watch Jesse Broadwater. You see his hand. He's got this classic kind of hand goes up in the air. He's yeah. just totally relaxed at yeah. a whole level, another level than most it's, people probably ever It's teach. easier to create relaxation than it is to create the same exact tension every time. Yep. So going into one of the – I mean, I don't know how much more we can talk about it. <sighs> like a little <sighs> block on a strap that wraps yeah. around your arm. But one more um, little question is – or thing to bring up, I guess, is – the, the angle of the trigger, this is a big deal to you, and obviously this is going to have some to, to do with um, uh, that whole yeah. thought process so of alignment. So with me um, and I and Danny, we all agree that if you get a trigger that's like a straight post or a curve that's, you know, it's still got a curve in it, but it's straight, um, what, what it causes is I put the finger on the trigger, and it... As I put it on there, and if you create, if you start to just squeeze, especially like on a straight post, um, you'll actually start to see the head or at least start to move to the right for a right handed shooter and left for a left handed shooter. Um, so, what I like to do is again create everything in line and pressure in the center. Um, I like to get the trigger swept back. Um, so, on this one, I don't know if we're going to quite go that way yet, but the triggers that I like are the ones that are swept back. Um, and when I create that, and what I mean by sweat back is, um, it almost looks like a, I don't know how I describe that, but yeah, it's, it just, it, it basically it's, you hold the head up. It's, it's not at angle. a 90 degree it's angle. It's not at a 90 that. degree angle. It's, uh, more of a what, 30, 35 or 40, yep. you know, 30, 30, 35 somewhere. It's sweat back more towards me. So when I start, you know, when I, that shot goes off, um, it puts that pressure or as I start to pull it, it pulls it straight back into 
the center of the release back into the webbing strap. Um, that's something else I need to touch on too, but back into the webbing strap of that release. So it's straight back in line. It's not way out on the end where it causes that release to move, the head of that move. It's straight back towards the center yep. um, where the pressure's already built up at. I'm not creating some pressure somewhere else where, hey, here's the pressure it's in the center. And it's not swinging ahead left or right. Um, it's just, you know, it's pressure right there. So that's it's right back dead, dead center. That's important to me. Um, another thing I didn't touch on, and good Lord, another toll? It's like <laughs> Chicago over here. <laughs> <laughs> He's to pick the right booth this time. Yeah, but um, another thing that's important to me is sh the connection. So what I mean by that is connection from the strap to the head. Okay, so um, you have essentially, I've seen three, but they're actually just two are used. Um, the webbing connection, um, Trueball has it, um, Scott has it, um, well, everybody usually got it, uh, Carter, you know, they've got a webbing connection there. That's important to me to have that webbing connection. It's like a micro just that length. Um, some guys like to wrap their... Um, it's like they like to wrap their finger up real deep around that trigger, and I don't. I like to get it there on the end. <coughs> Mine's actually wrapped around it. Yours wrapped around it. See, yeah. I, and, and to me, it causes. And but but, but that's from a hunting perspective. If I were just shooting, if I were just shooting uh, targets, I that would probably change. Honestly. I'm not trying to hit a dime. I mean, don't get me wrong. I want to be as accurate as possible on my hunting setup, but right. I, I need some security there because eh, no matter what, there's going to be a lot of excitement, excitement and a lot of movement when that moment of truth comes for whatever it is that I'm chasing, whether it's an elk or a whitetail or whatever. Um, there's just so much effort that's put into it. And when, when that time comes, I want to make certain that my I ha I'm able to put my finger on the trigger, especially I may be wearing a glove. Yeah. So I yeah. want to be able to make sure I've got, yeah. you know, enough margin of error there that the shot's not going to go off prematurely yeah. on me. Yeah, and that's – and to me, I mean, that's just the confidence. For it you, is. It's, it's just it, – you know, for you, it's like, okay, it's there. It's confident that you know it's there, and it's you're going to be able to make a shot. You ain't going to worry about it. To me, I just can't wrap my finger deep because it creates tension along the top of the wrist yep. or along the top of the hand there. And, again, I'm all about not being lazy. I mean, I've got to create tension, you know, a little bit. I've got to be able to pull and hold my bow back and whatever right. else. But, you know, I like to not get my finger. I don't like the trigger completely out on the end. I like it about in that first groove of the finger. Um, and it's not like I'm – now, you don't want it to get to where my finger's straight out. Right. You know, it's creating tension again. I like to just be able to get it set there. Um, and your trigger is extremely light. Yeah, mine – yeah, half Compared to yeah. most. And I still, though – um, and everybody's like, well, this, that's the sensitive, that's the sensitive part of your finger. And I've heard people say it, um, you know, what's, you know, it's there. Well, yeah, I know it's there to me. That's a, I know it's there. Right. You know, um, that, that's a little click in my, you know, a, a button in my brain that, or, you know, it says, okay, it's there. You know, it's, I'm not hunting for it. And if it's way deep, I, I'm kind of hunting for it. And I want to know it's in the same exact spot every time. So I'll actually take some skateboard grip tape. A um, little trick can everybody can do. If you got like a flat, uh, the trigger's not necessarily a round peg. I guess you can do it on a round neural type trigger. But if it's like a, f it's flat on the inside, there where you wrap your finger. Yep. I take skateboard grip tape. Um, I cut it the same width of that. I'll put that on there. And that kind of gives it a catch, especially with gloves. I know it's not going to slide off on the end. And I can feel it all the time. It's yep. there. And so, and, um, and that, and as I get it right there on the tip, it's fire. But I want to be able to adjust that release. What I was getting to is I want to be able to micro adjust that release to where I'm not having to curl that finger any. I don't have to stretch it out. I want to be able to just set it there. And it's amazing. I mean, I'm telling you, I've taken it. And if you look at the web, it's just got little lines in the webbing there on the adjustment. Oh, you know, adjust one little line of the webbing and it, my shot will change. It will light up. And it's because I'm not having to move that finger back any. It just sets there. It's just a natural position for my finger to be. Um, guys that shoot barrels, there's the barrel connector. You can, um, some of them have screws on it where you can just screw it down. Connector from the head of yeah, the release from the to head, the wrist strap. Wrist strap itself. Um, you can, un you know, just screw it down a little bit. It's like a, a nut on the bottom of them, and, you know, you can just keep tightening it up so you can find the exact length. I would tell you, though, 
don't guys do the I see it a lot um, guys will connect that or uh, cut that um, oh that all thread off there that's connected to the head to the strap they'll cut it off once they think they found a spot yep. shoot with it for at least a month um, shoot with it with on, with your gloves on um, and just shoot it in the backyard shoot it without gloves on and then go ahead and cut that <laughs> instead of you know hey this is where it's at and find right. out you need to go longer um, and then mark it um, on the webbing strap, I'll actually take a, uh, sh like a silver sharpie, and I'll mark it. And then I, if I feel like, you know what, um, I'm shooting a glove for turkey season. Like this turkey season's coming up. I've got one set up to where, you know, um, I thought, okay, it's it's okay feeling. I'll go ahead and mark the spot. But then, you know, last night I shot it for a minute there, and I, or, you know, for a little bit. I'm not shooting 100 arrows out of the bow of turkey hunt. I'm shooting one. Hopefully, I'd shoot 100 if I go to state. <laughs> awesome. Anyway, um, but I need to adjust it a little bit in, and that that helped have that silver mark or a sharpie mark there, where I could just barely move it in and out. If I wasn't paying attention, I would have moved it back to where it originally was, you know, or right. moved it in a little bit. So yeah, that definitely helps. Mark that spot for sure, and um, that will help. It, it just micro adjustments help a ton with that. Um, so. But I think we're coming out with two options uh, for True Ball. I don't want to speak for everybody over there, but it's definitely the web connection and I think the barrel connection. Uh, Danny Evans liked the barrel connection just because he likes to fill that bar. I think he finds an anchor point with that bar. Yep. And it's fine. Again, that's a confident thing. And he feels like he aims a little bit better. Well, and, and I think Braden, I know he, he's got a really stiff trigger. Yep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Silly car. Um, he he actually I don't know if he I'm gonna guess he wraps it. Oh, around. he wraps that thing down there. It's like a fish hook. You almost have to because if you're putting pressure on the top of it, it's gonna be very variable compared to if you. you it's kind of like you have to do one or the other. Yeah. There's like nothing in between because, yeah. it, like you mentioned, if you're if you're sque uh, squeezing your finger down, you can watch the arc change in your finger. Yeah. And so if you're pushing on the top of that release or at coming at it from a top angle and it's adjusted really heavy, obviously it's going to make an impact on that, that deviation of the line that the, the knock end of the arrow takes towards the target, which is going to change your impact. Right. So, um, But I think he's got his wrapped around yeah, really Yeah, he's got deep. his wrapped around pretty deep. And, so. and it's because he just uses back tension. You know, or he uses tension. I don't know if he uses relax. I can't speak for Mike. Um, right. But what he does, he just gets in there, and as he starts to, if he starts to pull, it actually pulls – the release stay it's almost like the release stays in one position like it's just almost cemented down yep. in that position and and it pulling his finger into that release and it fires you know yeah i think he like the term is thinking of it like a, a claw i mean that's how yeah. i mine is like that like a yeah. hay hook kind of thing around there and i'm just constantly pulling into it and and really i think what happens is um that as i'm pulling that wrist strap is working its way towards the tips of my fingers if that makes sense it's yeah. actually pulling through yep. the strap because i pull really hard into my bow and so as i'm i'm pulling because I, I know i'm going to it in the moment of truth or whatever it is whatever you want to say that and uh -huh. it, when it really counts when i'm shooting at whatever my target is that day and i put a ton of effort sweat blood and tears into getting to the top of that mountain to get a shot at a specific animal it, it I, I know that for me, no matter what, I'm going to be excited. I'm going to be pulling really hard into that bow. So that's yeah. – it's, it's it another reason why I have mine hooked around there. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, you know, whatever is going to give you the accuracy. Like I always said, what's the sense of spending all your time in the woods and a field or on the mountain yep. or we're in the blind, you know, here in a couple of weeks and waking up at <laughs> – and I've told this to guys at two that go and fall asleep in the tree stand – What's the sense of me waking up to go out there to screw up on something so minimal like that, you know, um, you know, and it's just little tiny finger pressure, you know. There's a 200-inch white tail out there, and he's in between two trees, you know. I uh, I should not be afraid to take that shot between right. those two two trees if there's a big enough gap in there, and I know my arrow's going to thread in there. I've shot enough of that that index finger of mine left to go off, and I, you know, and just finding that right tension where the finger needs to be and you know um yeah and you know and another thing too is um and you can tell this adhd moment for me here but um it's webbing or the strap itself sorry the leather buckle use that um, if you find a velcro strap that's gonna find and you're gonna find a big inconsistency in that as too as mm -hmm. well 
So what I do is I actually mark my buckle what hole it's actually going in. So I do it with like a white um, or a flow green um, or super bright like paint marker. So I could do it in the dark. So I know exactly what hole that's going into every yep. time because your body retains water and your wrist will actually swell up a little bit more or the other. Um, if you, you know, and as you, let's say in the morning I wake up and I go shoot and it's hold water a little bit, which right now it looks like I'm holding a lot of water. But <laughs> it's, uh, you know, if I wake up in the morning and I go to shoot and throughout the day, um, it will actually start to loosen up. Well, I want to keep that same tension all the time, you know. So I don't, you know, heave ho that thing down. And I don't make it uh, super, super tight. And um, and I actually make it, you know, to where it's not really loose either, where it's going to slide up completely up into my palm either, you know. So, it, you know, it's comfortable for me. And that's the thing, too, with and with any release is practice with that glove on. Guys will, you know, think that that hole worked great for me on the, um, you know, in the summertime. And that's why I say shoot with the glove. You find out that when you get that glove on, you you know take it down to that exact buckle hole. All of a sudden, everything feels short. It feels like that release is not on the tip of your finger. You're way back right. into it again. Well, it's because it just it's almost like you got the strap too tight. Um, it's not allowing that head to move up. So, but yeah, I mean, just you know, uh, that's something I want to touch on because everybody was like, man, I can't believe you still shoot index, and you know, I'm glad you brought me on. <laughs> the pro- well, well, did I bring it? Wait, how does this work out? No, I we're both know. bringing each other here. So, um, I'm just riding with you. Yeah. Hopefully so, getting to Paris. But we're glad we did this podcast because it's, you know, for me, everybody's like, well, you really can't do that unless you're hunting. Well, yeah, you can. You can do anything. Don't let anybody tell you since you're shooting a, you know, a wrist strap. I know, really, you know, a lot of guys out there shoot wrist strap in their backyard that can fly hammer. And, you know, they just don't shoot a tournament day in their life, and they don't have to shoot a back tension or a thumb button. Right. So, but for me, consistency makes more sense. Um, you know, again, I can go over the points, but, you know, it just keeps everything in a linear line. Um, I use it all season long anyway. Um, you know, I'm activated by one finger instead of having to keep consistency on all three fingers or just even two or four. You know, there's a four finger model out there. Yep. And I, yeah, there, yeah, I think there was a five, but uh, no, it can't be. Anyway. You only have four fingers. Yeah, we can edit that out, right? (laughs) Anyway. (laughs) No, um, I'm not. So, yeah. (laughs) So, it's consistency. So, for me, um, I can find an anchor point, and, you know, when I fire the shot, it's right behind the elbow. Everything's in a straight line. So, I've gone over that again and again, especially tuning broadheads long range. Keeping everything in line is a huge deal. Guys are like, oh, broadheads are flying bad. These are junk broadheads. No, it's just because, you know, you're firing a release horribly. You know, I didn't want to say you suck, but. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> no, no it's it's not is it because it's simple things are not released so uh, once you get those set up right and you find out that when you say when your mind says go and you touch that trigger and it's gone that's the trick there you know especially set, set intention see i told you i'd go on a whole day about this thing but <laughs> it's set intention when you say go or not say you go but your mind says go and it just naturally goes and it fires there should be no delay in that trigger well, and real quick, just to redefine, the word go does not mean slam the trigger. It does not mean <laughs> slam the trigger. It's just your mind natural reaction of do it. Everything's comfortable. Yeah. I mean, if let's say this. Again, if that dog ran out in front of me and I pushed on the brake, oh, and there's nothing there, you know, if I had to tap the brake four times or whatever and it's not going, there's a little freak out mode here, you know. <laughs> yeah. So you do anything to bail. So, but if it's there and it's, so you touch it and it's, you know, it's breaking or if the, so you, you know, not – lightly touching i'm saying you got to create a little tension in that trigger you know that's the biggest thing here guys are like you get so light you can breathe on it and go off no i have to create a little tension just in that trigger so that gives that uh that release directional line gives that line a gotcha. little bit you know if that makes sense so i'm sorry for everybody if uh, you had to drink after listening to me ramble <laughs> on and on and on. What, what would it be like if I did not take my ADHD medicine oh. and we did this podcast? Oh. It would be ugly. Yeah. It, it would. Oh. Uh, I, I know. Yeah. I'm just hoping with God's grace that he'll straighten me out one day. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah. So. But, All yeah. Right. It's, well, uh, that's pretty much it. Just look for that new release to drop out. I think we came out with the name uh execute i think actually my wife kind of 
threw out, hey, what about execute? And I threw it to the guys over there, and they said they liked it. So, hey, if it don't stay that way, I'm sorry. I mean, I didn't lie to you. The true I ball, mean, execute. Execute. So And the release date is you had a date. June 1st, I think it's what Brandon and everybody else said we're shooting for. Um, if it's July 1st, don't kill me, but it will be out. <laughs> Get all it's, kinds of uh, hate, you know. it's a release that it's eye appealing, but not only is it eye appealing, it is functional, it is smooth. The guys have seen it. Um, if you guys want to take a look at it, find me at an ASA shoot or an NFA shoot or go by the True Ball booth and you'll be surprised. This thing is awesome. I mean, it fires, it's clean, it's crisp. Guys that, I mean, there's guys that came to me that have never really shot a wrist strap ever some bigger names and they're like oh i could shoot that and that <laughs> that that warmed my heart <laughs> <laughs> that made it nice awesome. that made it that made it like okay and guys are like jackie coddle who's <clears throat> been in our industry for for just a short while i want to say years don't kill me jackie but uh, he's been in there for a long time and he knows what he's doing and when he picked it up he's like ooh. I like that. Has Randy Hendricks touched it yet? No, he hasn't. He's another awesome trigger fan. Yeah, you know what? I, I need to have Randy look at it if we can find him. I don't. Does he come to ASAs? Uh, he was in Foley. You know what? We're going to find him. So it would be awesome. Well, and there's another great reason to um, support True Ball. I, I, I've shot True Ball since, well, I know I was shooting like in the great outdoor games, and they've been very kind to me. I, hey, I even had my picture on a release way back in the oh, day. Oh, you did? Yeah, the Copperhead. I think it was oh, a copperhead. the old copperhead. Yep. yep. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that was but, a good uh, one. Yeah. I think it was. I'm trying to think about the. I wonder what buck I had on that picture. I think it was like 170 inch or. It was like it was like one of the yeah, coolest I pictures. Maybe like a 70 inch or. But <laughs> don't let him. I'll have a 70 inch you. bearded turkey on this he, picture. This one. He slays some giant whitetail, <laughs> yeah, so don't let him right. fool you. Not me. Well, we're yeah. going to get wrapped up. But the other reason I was just going to mention with True Ball that that is really unique to the company. I shouldn't say unique. It's not unique at all. Um, is it, they are a Christian company, and they do have an incredible um, staff that works there. And any time that you can support, you know, anything really, I believe, related to God, it's if you're a Christian, then at least give yeah. it a shot. Um, Definitely. Give them their attention. It, maybe you're going to shoot a, a – I mean, I know I mentioned I shoot a Carter for 3Ds, but I'm shooting the uh, Flex – I think it's called the Flex 3. It doesn't really matter if it's a 3 or 4 because I only have two fingers on it. Uh, Abyss um, Flex or yeah. Fulcrum Flex. Yeah. Um, and then the – or not Abyss. It's just the Fulcrum. 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 Yeah. That's it. Yep. And um, and then in, in the fall, I think I still shoot that copper. Yeah, I do. I'm still shooting that copperhead. Anyhow, they're, they're a good company with uh, great intentions. Yeah. and They're trying to strive to make this gain – and uh, as good as it can get, you know, yep. they really donate back and they give back to the archers. And, and I mean, they make an incredible product, too. Right. I mean, they really don't. And, and I'm not just saying it to blow smoke up anybody's skirt. I'm telling you, I, and anybody that knows me, um, wife to friends, like, dude, you are rough. You have scratches all up and down this boat. I'm like, wait, what's good of a carpenter? You look at me and get a scratch on a hammer. Right. You know, I throw my bow over the fence. I don't chuck it. You know, I just here it goes. I do. You know, okay, <laughs> so you do. But you know, I not want something that's reliable. Um, and especially these tournaments, I mean, man, we're rough on stuff. Yeah. You know, and so it's like, well, I want it to be able to hold up, and that's why I choose True Ball. And then they came to me and said, "Hey, do you want to help on this?" And I'm like, "Uh, yeah." So when they wanted to listen to us, um, that that was that was like, yep, yeah, that's when they want to listen to the shooters, and that really showed that they at least want to listen to us index guys, because there's a lot of companies out there, and a lot of them don't want to listen to index guys. I mean, let's face it, there's more sales and thumb buttons and, and oh yeah, every and configuration you can possibly imagine. Yeah, you know, and that doesn't mean those other companies aren't great release. Like I said, oh, I mean, I'm dude, shooting no, okay. variable amounts. Force Carter, those guys mm. have been great. Um, you know, yep. those guys have set you know, uh, set a lot of paths for a lot of people. And, and there's a lot of good companies out there. But I just choose to support them just because, you know, hey, they've been awesome. So, Well, we're actually, m believe it or not, got off the exit. Hopefully we we're in Paris. Well, we're not in Paris. Uh, we're, we're in hotels. Oklahoma, Hugo, because we couldn't find a hotel uh. close enough. Hey, that's what happens when you register like a day or two before 
and try it's to find called being time. fashionably late. I use that term all the time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I just got sight marks yesterday. Uh, I didn't even know what bow I was going to shoot. I switched yesterday from that green PSE machine to my Black Knight Halen X back to the green machine again. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm knock on it yeah, this weekend. You know, hey, you're on a game, right? At least yeah. you got it set up before you got down here. So Yeah, I'll, now yeah. all both of us have to do is literally just fletch arrows. I already cut mine. Hey, I, I got to buy some it. tomorrow. Oh, you do have to buy it. You do have one up on me. Jeez. Uh, yeah, I do have to buy some at least. All right, so. ladies and gents, thank you so much for listening. Hopefully you've gotten some great information. I know uh, it is probably hard to conceive that you can spend over an hour. Jeez, we're at like an hour or 20 minutes almost. Holy crud. Uh, talking about a small little box attached to a strap wrapped around your wrist. Wrist rocket. But we did successfully and hopefully covered everything you could possibly imagine. Check out Adam on the tournament trail. Uh, hopefully we're going to see me and you maybe shooting off. That would be awesome. Yeah, it would a big be awesome. shoot off. It would be a long ride home, but it would yeah, be pretty be awesome. awesome. It would and be awesome. Uh, he's, uh, shoots, he's a professional shooter for Hoyt and True Ball. Excel, and Victory Archery. Uh, Bodoc Archery. Jeff Sanchez. Jeff Sanchez. Feather Vision Chuck Cooley. Those guys, and um, are you feeling pressure to make sure you remember every one of your sponsors? You know, I kind of <laughs> am right now. Uh, <laughs> you know, and honestly, uh, if we're going to give shout outs, I couldn't do it without my family. Um, but us and the kids back home, uh, it's like I won a tournament or something right now. But it's uh, without those guys <laughs> letting me come down here and do this stuff, uh, I wouldn't be doing it. And most of all, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. If it went for Him, we would none of us would be doing this. So true story. Yeah. All right, Adam. Thanks for being on the show. And uh, no problem. We're out. Peace. Thanks so much for tuning in to the Rod White Bow Show. To help me keep more content like this coming, I would be super appreciative if you could subscribe, like, and share this episode on your own favorite social media platforms. And as always, feel free to make comments in the section below. By commenting, you're not only giving me more direction about the information that you want me to deliver to you in the future, but you're also helping me reach more people just like us. And as a thank you for your support, the first 50 people that sign up after the show for my new online course, 60 Day Elk Training, will receive a free extinguisher game call valued at $29.99 with an instructional DVD where I walk you through how to communicate with mature whitetails and bring them tight into bow range. Thanks again for tuning in.